Hi everybody and welcome to another Ni-Fi tutorial, Apache Ni-Fi that is. My name is Adrian and I'll be your host for today's tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to see how we can actually use SQL-like language to query the content of a flow file. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a, let's say, a comma separate, a CSV format file or a tab separated file and push it through a through a flow file and then after we apply some schema registry and CSV reader and JSON record set writer we're going to see how we can actually query the the flow file using the query record uh, processor so let's get on and start with it so first thing what you want to do grab and drop on your canvas a generate flow file so generate flow file Open your generate flow file and in your custom text uh, box, just copy and paste whatever values you have. But keep in mind, your average schema has to match your uh, whatever file format you send. In this case, uh, it's funny, I was answering a question these days uh, in uh, a Stack Overflow and somebody actually asked how we can parse this type of files and then look over it, query the content on the fly. So let's apply this one. Next thing what we want to do in order for our schema to be recognized we have to provide it with a parameter. So we're gonna drop an update attribute update attribute we're gonna drop an update attribute processor and we're gonna link it on the success and here we're gonna add a property name called schema schema name and actually this is gonna be the name of the schema you'll register with your Avro schema registry in our case we're gonna call it my schema my schema we're gonna copy this one and in my schema definition here I'll put all this in the video description. I'm going to paste it in. As you can see, the schema definition here. Uh, but before I go ahead, let's go and drop a query record on the canvas and join it with the update. So, query record. Let's drag and drop on the success. And now we're going to open the query record and we're going to add a CSV reader. CSV reader and let's call it uh, my schema so we can identify it. Let's give it the same name as my schema, right? My schema CSV reader. Okay, great. And a JSON writer. So you want to select the JSON record set writer and give it the same prefix. Great. Now we're going to apply this one so we can save it and then click on it and you see these arrows here we want to go and configure the CSV reader and JSON record set writer so right over here we're going to log into my we're going to see, get into the configuration of CSV reader by clicking on this button and then we're going to set up a new schema registry so what we want to do from this one you want to create a new service average schema registry and let's do the same prefix it with my schema average schema registry yes apply and let's go and configure the schema registry in the schema registry uh, it's just where is it yes here in the schema registry what you want to add you want to add the property name as the schema name so let's go and copy this one I just I want to I want to give you the same name and copy and paste this definition the average schema definition and apply now let me walk you through the average schema build so first you get the name then the namespace the record the type the record and here in the field you have to give the same headers as you have in your CSV file and the type of the data you hold into it in my case I declare them all a string so to make it easier all right, so now that we have the average schema registry set up, let's enable it, and then we're gonna link 
So the, the CSV reader, it's already linked to it, but here it's very interesting that the value separated, it's comma by default. In our case, it's a tab separated, so you want to change that. Alright? Press OK. And here, the schema strategy, you want to say use schema name property. Because you remember the beginning when we did the upgrade, the update attribute, we actually gave a schema name property. That's going to that's going to be used to track our schema registry. So select schema name and everything can stay the same. Apply and now let's, let's get to JSON record set writer. So pretty much this will be so let's enable the query reader the CSV reader sorry and we can see there are no errors no uh, it's enabled. Let's go into our JSON record said writer and do the same in the schema access strategy again we're gonna use the schema name property save and let's point to the to the new created schema registry which is my schema ever schema registry okay save and that's it and enable great so far so good let's go back into our schema registry and you see we get a a warning here there were no relationship for failure and original so what we're gonna do here we're gonna drag a log attribute this one is gonna give us an endpoint for our original failures but you're gonna wonder how we're gonna query it so what you want to do here you want to add a new property and we're gonna call it SQL and this is gonna be our SQL so you want to query the flow file where EID equals EID equals 2 in this case we should get only one line like this so let's copy and paste this one apply and now we're gonna have a new relationship since we added a new property this SQL relationship can go to let's say copy this and paste and we can say uh, This one is gonna go when I get a SQL, and not even even this. Let's do even something better. Let's drop this one, and let's say ID two. Let's go to our put it like this, and then add ID three. This will act like a route on attribute, pretty much. Great. So we got ID two and then we're gonna drop on the same one ID3 great so now we have two queries pretty much and three records in our as we can look at it we got three two queries so this line should become separated in their own flow file so let's go ahead first and generate configure this generate flow file to execute only once because I don't want a million flow files Stop it, and we can see that we have one in the pipeline. Update the attribute. Check out the queue, and we look for that schema name property. And we see we have schema name my schema. Great. Let's say let's exit, and then run the query record. So we can see we get no error. Everything is good, and we got one original, and we got each one of our queries had a response so let's go in here this was ID2 so if we go to ID2 we should get this in a JSON format and now uh, open it and you can see record count one he found one record with that particular value and let's view it let's format it and if we go back to our record we can see that it's identical snack one now let's go to the other one to the other record most likely it worked so ID3 let's look at it and yeah the night out let's go and check and that's how we query that's how we, that's how we query the flow file guys using the query record I hope you guys enjoyed it 
uh, give me a thumbs up or if you have any requests on making more tutorials like this just drop me a comment and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.